we'd like to create some wooden pieces that will fit along the hip, kind of some half circle shapes in the same style that we created the belts and the cowl. So a piece of carved wood over a piece of upholstered fabric. And so let's create the initial shape here. So if we go get a, let's get a polygon primitive cylinder and let's rotate it this direction. Okay. And I'm going to give one subdivision along the cap and then I'm going to scale it down and move it over. Okay. Well, it's going to be a little bit bigger than that. So I'm looking at kind of the half, the lower half of this kind of move it up. So something like that, we can go ahead and get rid of all of the other geometry. All we need is the cap. There's another cap inside. So we'll go ahead and select that, get rid of that. And then we also can get rid of the top. So now we're left with just this piece. And if you remember, I didn't like to have the poles on geometry that we're going to be subdividing. And so I'm going to isolate this and then I'm going to keep the edge that's going straight up and I'm going to delete the rest of them. Just like that. And then I'm going to take from here to here with multi-cut and let's go here to here. And then we can go from here and we'll just kind of go straight up and here, same thing. And then we can take those lines and I'm just going to space them out a little. So something like that. Let's go ahead and turn off our isolate select. I'm going to bring it up here a little bit and let's center our pivot, modify center pivot. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Okay. Now I want to shape it to the body a little bit more, right? And so right now it's not really, uh, let me hide this for a second. Right now it's not really aligned to the shape of the body. Okay. So there are several ways that we can do this. I'm going to just add a quick lattice. So we're going to go to deform. Let's create a lattice. And this is the number of subdivisions I have. That should be sufficient. I'm going to just take the points on the back and kind of move those back. Points of the lattice there. Okay. We can also come in here. Let's delete our history. We can also just grab points. And if we turn on soft select, we can move those areas. And so we'll go into soft selection. Let's take our radius down to 0.2. And then we can start to move you know, different parts of this in and out. So that's probably a good curvature wise. Another way that you can now kind of smooth this out is to use the sculpt tool. So if we go to the sculpting shelf, these tools have kind of come over from Mudbox. We have a, a smoothing brush. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Now we're going to have to, to scale it down a little bit. So I'll just hold down B on the keyboard. And I'm going to scale this down. So pretty small. And then we can come in and just kind of hit this with a smooth. And it's going to space all that geometry out and kind of smooth it out for us. All right. Now we can add some thickness to it. And again, we can, we can do this in a very similar way that we did the other piece. So uh, if we've got this selected here, I'm going to just hit shift P to drop it out of any hierarchy that it's in. And it's not. So there we go. We'll go ahead and hit control D to duplicate. And then on the original, I'm going to hit control E to add some thickness to it. Let's keep our divisions down and I'm going to set the divisions to three. So we don't have to go in and add those edges later. Okay. And then if we go back to our poly modeling, go to our multi-cut, we can still add these support edges here so that when we smooth it, it's something like that. All right. So we have the other piece that we copied. So let's go ahead and isolate this. Now I'm going to add a loop right here. If you remember how we did the other part and we'll just deselect those. So now we're left with something that's a little bit smaller, right? So now we want to create that same look. So we'll go back in, create these. Let's select all the faces here. Got a lot of loops going on, so we'll just deselect those. 
let's hit extrude and we're going to pull it this way with no divisions or one division actually and then we're going to grab everything else and extrude the interior and do a little bit of an offset like we did on the other pieces. So again, extrude, let's pull it out, take our divisions down, and let's just give ourselves a little bit of an offset. Maybe 0 0.01. And let's give ourselves a little bit more thickness. Okay, so something like that. And let's make sure to just move it back in so it it intercepts the or intersects the the wood part. Okay, we can select both of these and kind of move them back towards the body a little bit more. Now we want to have a hinge that connects this, and I want it to be sort of two gold pieces with like a little strap between. And so let's create just a simple cylinder here, and this is going to be our hinge. And so I'm just going to make it one of these kind of in isolation here. So something like that. Let's decrease the subdivisions along the axis to like 12. And let's add some subdivisions along the height. So something like that. I'm going to take the two edges on either side. It's scale. I'm going to just scale them out to move them towards the top. Let's take the polygons at the top and the bottom. Extrude those out. So something like that. Take our divisions down. Let's take the polygons on both ends, those and these at the bottom. It's going to be symmetrical from top to bottom, so it's a reason we can do both of these at once. I'm just going to scale it out a little bit. Let's do an extrude with a little bit of an offset. No divisions. And then another extrude with a little bit of thickness. Again, one division, offset, let's do 0.1. So, I don't know, maybe something like that. And then if we're going to be smoothing that, we can add support edges. Now, this is something, like if this was a final game model, you wouldn't have any of these support edges because you're not going to be smoothing the mesh at all. Only the normals. Okay, so something like that. Just a cylinder with some detail on either end. Okay, and we can actually use this in several spots. Uh, but let's go in and I'm going to pull one of these forward. And then I'm just going to make a copy. Control D to duplicate. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then let's scale this down. And I want one of these to be on the belt and one of them to be on the hip piece. So right up here. I don't want it to be too big and I don't want it to kind of get in the way of anything else. So something like that. And let's rotate it so it's at the right angle. We'll duplicate that and move it down to the hip. And let's move the hip piece. I'm just going to move it forward a little bit and rotate it. Kind of get it in the right spot here. And then all we need to do is put a little plane or a uh, cube right in here for the strap. This one, I'm going to go ahead and put on the end of the belt. So think of these. These are going to be gold. So I'm just thinking about the interplay of the different materials that we're having here. This is gold, and then we've got it up against the, the natural wood. I think it would look good. So something like that. And then we can duplicate it over to the other side. And then we'll have a kind of ornamental piece in the front. Okay, so go ahead and just add a cube uh, for the strap. And so you want it to be really thin and go between these two hinges. We'll take a look at that uh, when we come in the next uh, clip. We can also move these hinges over, like if you want them to be a little bit more in the center. I just don't want it to interfere too much with the hook. And we can also move this if it's not hitting at the right spot. We can kind of move this. So it's a little bit closer to the to the center line there. Actually, it's pretty centered. So all we're needing is the the kind of strap that comes down. So go ahead and finish that. And then in the next clip, we're going to look at every all the geometry that we've made here in Maya and then look at what we need to do to get this exported so that we can take it back to ZBrush to add all of our sculpted details to it. OK, so we'll go ahead and do that next.